consent. So uh, like you deal a lot with the, the legal side of contracts and, and stuff. And I'm, I'm very curious about this world of consent because it feels like, first of all, like terms of service may change at any point in time and you have no choice. Like you must consent to whatever the new things are. You, you need to stop and terminate your use of this service. And so like, and even if you do or do not consent, like we have learned from the likes of Edward Snowden, that it doesn't matter. You like, for example, um, location tracking um, that is done through cell phone networks is happening with or without your consent. There's like a law that says like, yeah, we can, we're, we're just gonna track you for safety purposes and we're never gonna delete that information. And so like, what do we do? Like, it, this is a con growing concern about parents. It's like, we don't have a choice. Like, what does consent even mean these days and what can we do? Wow, that's a big question. Uh, <laughs> I will. I, I, I'm only giving you the hard ones, I guess. I apologize. <laughs> no, no, no. It's, it's a great question. Uh, consent is here to stay, so you're going to hear that a lot. Um, but the issue with consent, uh, so so, let me back up. Consent, as it relates in a legal sense, is you know, this is what a a a business want to have from a consumer about how they share information, right? So they definitely want your consent, right? So before you can even read almost anything, they want to say, you know, say yes, 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 yes to whatever it is. And then we do whatever. And then, you know, I don't know about you, but you're getting, you know, as terms of service change, they're sending new emails. Oh, we're changing our terms of service. We want you to say yes, 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 you know, to everything. So that's the way the world is going to be now, I think. Um, even, you, you know, in, in the U.S. So let me back up with the um, with the GDPR in, the, in Europe. When it came mm -hmm. out, um, you know, it was very uh, adamant on consent, right? So they're, yeah. so basically they're saying there are like six legal bases that, that a uh, business can use uh, data of individuals, and one of them is consent. And consent is the, the like kind of the last one. And people want to use other business want to use other things because those other things mean that they don't necessarily have to ask the individual for consent. But if you have situations where you have businesses that are are giving services to consumers, you know that may be the first thing they have to do because they're making changes and stuff like that. Uh, the problem with consent is that you can consent to a lot of things. You know, there may be granularity uh, brought into what you can consent to. Um, companies are struggling with situations where people withdraw consent, right? So you need to be able to have the, the ability or agency to say, okay, I consented to all these things, but now I changed my mind and I want to do something else. So that's kind of a struggle that I think businesses are having because a lot of the, the data that we're collecting or the systems that they're using, they were meant to be permanent. So they were meant to not ever delete anything. Uh, so right. you're sort of going against the grain of how a lot of these technologies were even built to work. So I think, you know, customer, we as consumers really need to get savvy about what we're saying yes to. And like you said, I, you know, you know, some things you can't even use without, you know, if you don't consent, you can't use it. Right. <laughs> so it's not like you have that much of a choice. So the choice is use it or not, but be savvy about, uh, you know, what you're saying yes to. Uh, okay. So can you, um, so I'm, I'm hearing that it's like the, the issue of consent is getting a little bit muddier um, simply because of like other regulations such as GDPR increasing the requirements, but it's still a little bit um, like fuzzy for me. And I'm wondering if we could, if we use Alice's example, um, she was saying that like we are um, starting to see a little bit more of this in education. Um, and she is wondering like, uh, you know, like a backend AI, for example, collecting information about students. Uh, and I, I'm wondering, okay, let's say we had a situation of education and, you know, there, there is a point of consent, but like even for them, like we're dealing with minors, like maybe they, they don't have that ability to consent until 13 years of age legally. Right. 
Um, it's kind of like a different set of rules. And so who's consenting? It's generally the parent consenting on behalf of, uh, of the child. And then the question is like, generally, I don't know like what can be done. I know in France, they have like specific rules where you as an adult can like request the stuff be that is about you like before 13 years of age, like deleted. But I don't know what rights you have in other regions like the United States. Um, but do you have any insights on like what, what can be done? Like what what does like let's say I already gave consent. Like what does withdrawing consent mean in different regions? Like do you yeah. still have that right to like take stuff away? Or is it only when like in certain countries that you have that right? Or is this a new kind of is this a new thing in, in the world of privacy? Yeah, it's different from country to country, right? Uh, yeah. In terms of what they will be able to do. So you're right about consent. So the kid is, you know, uh, different things kick in under 13, 16, 18, right? So once once a child gets 18, and this is a situation we're seeing where kids going to college, right? So not every college kid is 18 years old. So until they're 18, there are things that their parents would need to consent. Uh, you would need to still get the parental consent. And then- Can you give some examples? Oh, sure, right. So let's say, let's say you have an app, right? Uh, mm -hmm. You have an app uh, that is for teenagers. Uh, so this app for teenagers, they're gonna ask you your age, right? And then where you are, because there are different laws that apply to that. Uh, let's say if the person was using the app when they were 16, uh, so then they would some through some mechanism there would have to be some parental consent of some sort, and a lot of times it's you know say a button that says oh your parent consented or something. So so kick the button. Is that in the U.S. or like which regions is that? That's definitely in the U.S., but there are other. Uh, the EU also has kind of these age limitations about what you do. Um, but it's different because, um, let's say in the EU, uh, at, when a kid gets of age, well, they can do that in the US too. If a kid gets of age, they can also go go back if the data is still being collected about them and they can withdraw their consent. So once they hit a certain age, they can have uh, agency over their data and it won't be uh, it won't be something that the parents control. Does that make sense? That's interesting. Yeah, like I always thought like at the, um, there was this notion of the age of 13, which was they wouldn't even let you sign up for an account, like most social media. And then at 13, like I, my understanding was like, it, it was a kind of like your internet bar mitzvah. And then like at that point, you're a, like a friggin' adult, you know, and then everything you do is like kept by them. Um, and, but I didn't realize that there were like different rules for 16 and 18. And in some cases they can request that stuff gets like taken down or you need to have the parents permission before something like that is posted. Then does that also mean that the parents can also take that, uh, that information back to say like, Hey, you know what? Like not allowed. <laughs> yeah. Parents can withdraw consent on the, the, uh, on behalf of a minor. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, so once, let's say the kids use the same app, once he turns to 18 and the parents no longer have that power, it goes over to the individual. And then the individual, depending on how this data is kept, they can make other requests. So we've seen in Europe where kids at, because they have younger ages too for certain things, they can say, you know, I don't, you know, my parents gave consent, but I don't agree. <laughs> So I want you to take oh, my data down or something like that. So, yeah. Uh, I like this, you know, like, I think that this is like a small step, but it's a powerful one. Like as a, an individual, you can consent. Um, what, what was the example? Like the, the Gwyneth Paltrow, um, like sharing photos of her daughter and her daughter saying like, Hey, look, we already talked about this. I don't, I don't, I do not consent to you <laughs> sharing these photos. Right. <laughs> and it's like that happens, right? Like, because right. as parents, we're very uh, there's that that whole term of uh, sharenting, right? Like, uh, oh, we don't want to be like sharing all these things about our child because right. they don't have an ability to consent, and it's tough because we want to talk about our children, um, and we're very proud of them. But how do we do that in in today's age? It's mostly through like how it's how we connect with other parents is like through social media, and so right. uh, parents are always hesitant to do that because like yeah, at some point they might not be very proud of these things. They might want to take them down. 
Um, but you know, the way I see it is like because they if you focus on their outputs, right? Like, you know, mm -hmm. like what they create instead of like what they look like when they are that right. age, then it's it's different, right? Like and you're focused on what you're proud of about them, not necessarily how they look. Right. right? Like, oh look at how much cute my daughter is, isn't the same thing as look at this thing that she created that is I'm super proud of. Like she's been making really great progress. And you know, right. I think that the, there should be some guidelines like that around if you're going to share something, you know, like share what you're proud of, you know, about them, because that encourages them too. And other people can say like, yeah, oh, that's really great work. Yeah. And you haven't revealed their identity. You haven't like, right. Yeah. Put that's their true. name out, for example.